yesterday I did a video which, you know, caused a lot of comments and backlash and stuff like that. And, and I did mention in the video that I'm not saying that traditional uh, Catholic groups are not doing this, are not educating kids, are not uh, helping in Africa. I'm just saying the perception that those the, of those who don't like the traditional Latin Mass, don't like the traditional movement. Their perception is the traditional movement is all about one thing without focusing on, on the whole garden of what we're supposed to do. The, you know, it's, it's, the liturgy is this beautiful, I mean, it is the source, so much in the centre of our faith, that Vatican II quoting their source, um, source some you know the sacrifice of the mass to quote that inquire entire quote this the sacrifice of the mass is source so in center of our faith it's that sacramental encounter with christ and it's supposed to transform us you are supposed to be radically changed after every communion um you know i could never fathom even when i was a child how can we be if this is god how are we the same <laughs> you know you 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 think people are becoming out of the church and and just being you know, like angels flying around the place. Like, you just met God. Like, how are you not transformed? And I, 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 I never understood the kind of the, you know, the the separation. You know, why wouldn't people love this encounter with God? Like, or maybe I was just too simple-minded as a child to, 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 see it, to see it that way. But the older I've gotten, you know, it is the encounter with God. You know, it is a real encounter with God. What does... That encounter with God call us to do when it calls us to do what he's telling us in the gospel, you know, bring it down to the simple reality. You know, Christ says what you've done to the least of these you have done to me. Uh, and so, you know, I'm kind of setting the, the bar high here. The traditional movement has to be known for for something that's that's great. That's that comes from their uh, their sacramental encounter with Christ. You know, and as I said so many times in so many videos, I'm with I'm with uh, um, traditional Catholics. I wish we hadn't destroyed the liturgy and made it so man-centered and so banal and so you know, the loss of sacred. The the the, the people aren't aren't engaging with it so many people aren't engaging with it um you know we had such a rich sac um th liturgical tradition in in the roman rite and sadly that has been no 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 that's all bells and whistles and incense no you don't need that altars and altar rails and frescoes and beautiful churches and you know beautiful sanctuaries and beautiful vestments no 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 let's get rid of that and 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 really, by getting rid of all of these signs, you know, getting rid of all of these signs, we're getting rid of the 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 where we're what where we're going to. You know, we're getting rid of our destination. Yes, we have beautiful churches, and we make an effort to have beautiful churches, and we make an effort to have a beautiful liturgy because it's God we're encountering here in the liturgy, and we make no apologies about it. And, and I really think the church sooner or later will, will understand this. You know, we should make no apologies for having a God-centered liturgy. I mean, if there was one thing, the, the one thing that, that drove me nearly to become Orthodox was the liturgy. The encounter, their reverence in the liturgy, which is completely God-centered. I mean, the whole atmosphere... I don't know if people have been to an Orthodox liturgy or a Greek Catholic liturgy. But if you go to Mount Athos, uh, you know, they they purposely ask you, please pray with us at our divine liturgy. Come to our divine liturgy. Now, as Catholics, sometimes they'll say, now you sit, please be here at the back and the Orthodox. Sometimes they segregate you. Sometimes they don't care. But they always asked us pilgrims, to go into the divine liturgy and it's captivating it's divine i mean the frescoes the chant the liturgy i mean you feel these monks heart in that work that they're doing of, of praising god and you know many catholics have noticed have become orthodox 
because of that encounter in the liturgy. They don't know, under, a lot of them aren't understanding the theological distinctions and the theological um, discussions that we've been having. They're seeing, they're coming from a very empty liturgy in often many places that doesn't move your heart, that's put together. I've seen priests walk into mass with their hands out like this, you know, walking in, you know, like this. Not walking in. Good morning, everybody. And we're here to have done Sunday Mass. And how are yous all? Ah, it's great to see yous. And I see some new faces here. Well, welcome to this parish to our Sunday Mass and the fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time. And, uh, you know, that's how the Mass kicks off. That's how the Mass kicks off. That's how they've been trained. So it's not a criticism to them. It's just... Hold on a second, you've, you've come from the sacristy over. There's no altar service anymore. There's no altar boys. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, coming over and, uh, you know, we're kicking off like a, a, what could be any prayer service. You know, the, the we look at the altar and the chalice is dumped. I, I often go in and when I look at how a mass is prepared, the chalice is dumped there. You, you know, the, the, the corporal is just dumped over the thing. Uh, or you know, I'm 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 just relating personal experience. I don't like blogging about this because you oh you're there pointing the finger at this. You're there pointing the finger at these priests, and you're there. And, and the last thing I want to do is criticize priests because that's the training they received. That's the training they received. Sadly, many times, the training. I mean, the lo- the sacred has been completely lost. You know, if you go to knock most weekends. Sometimes you will see a Sira Malabar, Sira Malankar, you know, that old Syriac uh, liturgy celebrated ad orientum in one of the chapels in the in the adoration chapel there. I've seen it a few times with the with the with members of those churches that are there. It's very different. You know, we're with the priest ad orientum, God centered, you know, a liturgy that 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 is deeply reverent and, and that that speaks to people. So I understand, I understand this debate and I think the church has to take a step back and say, how are we going to engage a highly intelligent next generation? Uh, uh, You know, we have kids working in all these tech companies and programs and pharmaceutical companies, degrees in this, degrees in that, doctorates in this, You you know, where I work, you can't get in there without a good third level education. And yet our worship, look at what we've done to our worship over, you know, we, yes, Latin and this, like, but do you not think that that would not challenge this generation a little bit more? Do people not think that this will challenge them? I think that, I I think sadly the church over the last 10 years has been dividing itself unnecessarily in this area, in my opinion. You know, evangelize, get it out there. Bring Christ to the masses. Use all your use all these tools available. If the, the traditional Latin Mass was good for St. Peter Damien, you know, who died with lepers, it's good enough for us as well. It can be offered. I'm not saying I'm not I'm not here lambasting the Novus Ordo because I've seen the Novus Ordo celebrated very reverently with a lot of love. But, um, you know, I, I just wanted to put this in context. And so without going on too long, you know, if we love this liturgy, we have to be great in the world. You know, if we love this encounter with Christ, we have to bring him who we've encountered to those who don't know him and use all of the tools that we have available. You know, there are people that have grown up, generations that have grown up in Africa with the new mass who love our Lord, who have a deep union with God. You know, probably greater saints than many of us will ever be. And when we get to heaven, we might be surprised who is ahead of us in the queue. (laughs) The last will be first. You know, who's ahead of us in the queue into heaven when we get there? It mightn't be, you know, who we think it is. And, you know, there, there are people that are fully catechized, that love the liturgy, that go to mass. There are priests that walk for days to get to mass. There are laity who walk for days to get to mass. And, you know, in front of that suffering, we can't be you know, indifferent. You know, we have to renew the church, renew our faith. I, I mean, I'm caught between this, 
this strange situation. You know, sometimes the kids are there. I don't want to go to school today, Daddy, because I've only got one thing that I'm doing and I'll have to study and I'll be sitting there for hours and, you know, maybe I'll stay at home today. This is what sometimes the kids say. And I don't think I'm unique in that situation. So at one time you've 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 people that you've kids that are really yeah, they're not motivated too much by school. And then in, 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 in places where Father Francis is from, you know, we have to decide which kids we will send to school and which kids won't get schooling. You know, we when we started this campaign in that village to send kids to school, so we managed to raise enough funds for about 50 kids. So that's the amount of money we have for 50 kids. What, what 10,000 euros or over 10,000 euros we got. So we said, look, we'll... we'll, we'll We'll fund 50 kids. We have 160 kids that wanted to go to school. We don't have the money to send them. And not only that, as soon as other villages around this village heard that these kids were getting money to go to school, other Catholics asked, maybe you could help us to get to school as well. You know, maybe those kids could get to school. I feel, I, I feel it's an immense tragedy in the Catholic Church that we are so focused sometimes on some things that we we miss the suffering that's right in front of our eyes. And if every one of our entitled kids, and I say that in the sense that, you know, education is laid on for everyone if you want it in Ireland. You know, and it's not bad education. You know, most primary education is pretty good. You know, education is laid on, uh, you know, you, you there, is all, there are all these resources. Even if you homeschool, there's lots of resources for homeschooling. In Africa, they can't use those resources. You know, you know, I see people homeschooling. OK, they, they, they're doing classes online with homeschooling networks. And, you know, they're they're using technology to 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 avail of homeschooling. If you're into that or, or public schools or Catholic schools. In Africa, there are no resources to do that. So if we are ever going to solve the, 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 the questions, that, that the problems of, of this world, you know, we have to help. You can't boil the ocean. We can't change the world. You can change one child's life. That, that's my, my simple philosophy, or that's how I see it. You know, so... My, my, my challenge to Catholics across the board is make yourselves known for, for doing what Christ did. Christ would do this. He would feed the poor. He would. We have, if this world didn't have resources to feed those poor, you know, okay, but we do have the resources. We do have the capacity. Instead of spending 250 billion euros of our money to try and kill another uh, half a million uh, people in, in Russia. And again, I'm not getting into the politics of it, but that's where we're raising our funds and our resources to kill each other. It's an utter failure. It's an utter catastrophe for humanity. And in the church, us Catholics, you know, where has Christ got us distracted, hating each other, dividing each other, they tried to do it in Ireland this year. They tried to, 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 to yeah, let's get the, yeah, there's something, let's, 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 let's get at the bishops because of this and that and the other. Oh, second, guys, what is Satan trying to do to us? You know, Christ is calling us to act like him. You know, he's given us a roadmap. You know, he's put the arrows there. He, this is where he wants us to go. You know, to transform our church. to trans I mean, baptize. I think it's an utter tragedy. The baptized Catholics in our church, you know, are left in abject poverty. Not to talk about the world, but baptized in our own church are left in abject poverty. Without so much as a school, sometimes without water, sometimes without even a church. We baptised, it, it would be better not to baptise them some way, shape or form. Because at least, at least we wouldn't be able to say, oh, look, we have, we have, we, we baptise Catholics. 
that we don't even educate. You know, what? How did we arrive to this situation in the church where we will baptise Catholics? We will not educate. We cannot educate. You know, that's on the one side. So on the one side, we will baptise Catholics. We, you know, on the other side, you know, where, where's Archbishop Vigano? Has he ever gone and blogged and worked for a month in Africa? You know, I don't know. I, I, I asked the question, you know, we spend so much time with the slingshots at our clergy and at the Pope and, you know, let's get this out. What What's happening today? Everything that the, the Pope sneezes. Oh, he's, he's at the end of his life and pray for the Pope. He sneezed today. And I'm just sitting back and saying, like, guys, are we not losing the plot here? Are we not losing the plot sometimes? You know, and as I said, I encourage reverent liturgy. I encourage the renewal of the faith. I encourage the encounter of Christ. I'm encouraging all of this. But I also encourage people to know, to look where Christ is moving. You know, if we bring somebody into the church, if we baptize somebody in our Catholic church, we have to help. You know, we have to renew. We have to educate. You know, which child do we leave behind in our Catholic Church? I always felt this, even when I worked in Mexico, I just said, we could we could have done so much more. You know, it, we, we, could, we, we could have done so much more. You know, uh, a lot of, a lot of, you know, there's this whole debate about immigration and so forth. And, and I don't think, um, you know, mass f- migrations are healthy for populations. You know, most of the, a lot of the Irish that left Ireland because of economic migration, they always missed Ireland. They always yearned for Ireland. They were always sad about the family they left behind. I don't think people were skipping and dancing to get out of Ireland. Certainly, the the my family weren't. You know, my my father worked in Canada, my my, my uncles and so forth, and they always wanted to come home. And I think that's the that's the uh, kind of the connection that people have to to their home. Why the reason? You know, we need to help these populations to love their home to have jobs in their home to have stability in their home and uh, you know I might be very utopian in my outlook but I do think as Catholics you know we need to focus on the priorities every baptised Catholic should have access to education and we can do that you can't change the world you can change one child's life God bless you take care bye bye